Hey guys, welcome back to the Noob Nerd channel, and I'm back with another Flash review. Yes, last week there was no episode, and I was supposed to get out a bonus video, because of course I couldn't do a review for an episode that wasn't out. And But I couldn't do that, I'm sorry, I was slacking there. But I've been planning more new videos for the future, not just Flash reviews. But as I've been saying, I've been enjoying them, so every episode I'm carrying on until Crisis and hopefully beyond. So yeah, I think we're on episode... Six right now? God, if I got that wrong. I think, yeah, episode six. Well, nevertheless, the title says I'm going to be doing discussion. Let me know your thoughts, of course. My opinion's not always fact. But, yeah, I think I like these shows. These types of CW superhero shows are just made for discussion. But if you're wondering if there's any more other content coming out, yes, there will be. Check out the end of this video as I'll be detailing some of the videos I will be doing, as well as the Flash reviews. Because I can't just keep on doing Flash reviews, I want to do other stuff as well, branch out, you know what I mean? Some big stuff is happening, some already, some big stuff is already happening this fall, with lots of nerdy content for me to digest. But yeah, let's just make this episode review a, a, more shorter. Oh, that's the wrong word. More shorter, I mean, less long than the other episode reviews I've done, half an hour reviews. Because this episode was, well, to be fair, I want to make my review shorter because sometimes I do waffle on a bit. But also this episode was probably the most fillerish of the entire series so far, which is no problem with that. It's no problem. It did feel the most fillerish. Doesn't mean it was necessarily filler. And yeah, um, it was a good episode. It was a good episode. This season has been great so far, as you've been telling. Of course, if you haven't checked out my previous reviews, check them out before previous context. For what I feel, what I'm feeling towards the season, and and the characters as they progress through their storylines, and yeah, I did think the characters did progress in their storylines reasonably well. But there was a lot of a lot of filler. You could, you could tell, you could you could definitely tell this was just biding time a bit. There's still some good good moments as we'll discuss. So yeah, for this episode review, I'll be sticking with the picture format where I talk to you through the camera, but also the pictures will show you what I'm talking about to some extent as well. But of course, I think I'm, I'm going to split it into three storylines because there were pretty much three running storylines. Or oh, storylines. We'll see about that, if you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, three storylines. I'll be going through each one separately. Even though they were all happening at the same time, they were all progressing at the same rate. But of course, I'm just going to talk about each storyline separately just to make it clearer for me and you. So yeah, let's start with the the most pointless the more the more pointless storyline that didn't need to be there, but it still helped a, a bit if you know what I mean. So you had the Cecile and Chester P. Runk, I think is that his name. Yeah, we hadn't seen him since episode one. Like they kept on mentioning him. I thought Chester was going to be introduced or sprinkled in throughout the rest of the episodes, but the previous episodes we've had so far. But no, they've, he's only appeared once, um, which is a bit of a disappointment. It just come so it just feels like it just comes out of nowhere when he comes back if you know what I mean, and. They are designing him to be almost a vibe-like replacement in the future, I think. You even see when he's looking at his um, webpage when he searches his name and he's pronounced dead, which is mad. Uh, <laughs> you see he likes vibe coffees. They're trying to flesh out his storyline a bit. And that was a good moment when he looks upon the webpage and the music suddenly stops after he was dancing across Star Labs, which was a bit of a cheesy moment. But... I bought it, the actor sold it, to be honest, with his moonwalk, with his dance moves, his scientific love, of course, was backed up by the first episode when he was making that party people stream, much like this one on the YouTube channel, <laughs> but yeah, so you buy the scientific love for it, but it was getting a bit over the top, but I liked how they switched it up, why the music stops, he looks upon the death page, he realises he's practically dead, he's like, how, how am I supposed to reinvent himself, I guess? Um, but they didn't really focus on that for the rest of the storyline as the episode progressed. They did, they made it the reason why he turned to Cecile, but it was kind of a loose reason, and they didn't really go back to that point, really, in my opinion. I think it would have been cool if they got a bit more dramatic with it and focused on how, how is he going to deal with the fact that he's dead, practically, but he's not dead, if you know what I mean. Like, he's not dead, but everyone thinks he's dead. They didn't really, they, sh they never focused on that. And I feel like that could have been a really cool storyline. A, a better storyline than we, what we actually got this episode. Because what we did actually get was Cecile trying to ask out, well, trying to help Chester ask out that girl. I don't forgot her name. And it just feels half arsed in my opinion, a bit. They do the best with what they have, the actors, to be fair. Um, 
Cecile, the actress who plays her, I've grown to like a bit more as the series has progressed, but she hasn't reached the same level as, let's say, Cisco's girlfriend has from last episode. A character who I didn't really care. Both characters are similar in the fact they don't came out of nowhere, but I think Cisco's girlfriend, I forgot her name. How can I forget her name? Sorry about this. She deserves better. <laughs> she deserves better. But she she was fleshed out a bit more. Her presence was warranted with the way she was interacting with other characters, but also, also dealing with her own character, not just being a fiddle for other characters you know what i mean but cecilia just seems it's just an excuse for another storyline and just another piece of the puzzle in terms of just being there for the other characters but not being there as her own character not justifying why she herself should be there it's not as much as the other characters it seems half assed a bit because it's like it's like it's almost no, they could they could have done what i said could do what i said but something a bit cooler than that and so it does feel half assed because when they introduce uh, Chester's girlfriend as a, like a joke in the first episode which was funny jokes by the way it just seems like oh yeah let's use that as an excuse for the storyline when he does come back or when he comes back he's gonna try and ask out a girl after he's seen himself that he's pronounced dead even though he's not the correlation's not there in my opinion it just isn't there they try and make humor of it when Killer Foss is there but she doesn't barely has any lines there anyway when she tries to hop in and help Cecile help Chester uh, get a girl and it is funny when um, Chester knocks over all the cappuccinos that she ordered for him or he ordered for her to deliver but that was pretty much the extent of it just a couple of laughs but not really anything substantial and let's just say both characters will have to do a lot more if they want to stay in my consciousness if that makes sense of why they should be in the show you know <laughs> You know what I mean? But there's 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 potential there with the meta human storyline as we move on well not move on to the next storyline before the end of the storyline, which is when they talk about the message of why they're hanged out together in the first place in classic CW fashion. <laughs> like Chester's speech about of finding a place in the world and maybe Cecile has to herself. That was a cool little thing. But if the storyline was a bit cooler beforehand then maybe it would have been more even better impact on me as an audience member. But it, it certainly gave me more to look forward to with Chester. And maybe with the right circumstances, he can be a good replacement for one of the characters if they do decide to leave. I think it's a good backup character, if you know what I mean. But potential to go further than just a backup character who comes in if an actor leaves, per se, or in crisis, something mad happens and one of them dies, as well as Barry Allen, who might die himself as well. Barry Allen and Ralph Digby, another mission together. I think I said this last week, I do like when they two are interacting in the episode. It goes back to that, that Goldface episode in Season 4, one of the few highlights of Season 4. A lot of the few main episodes I can go there like, oh, Monster of the Week type thing. But it was a cool little subversion, Criminal Enterprises. Ralph justifying himself why he's in the show. Of course, by now, he's already justified himself in being in the show. I think he's more sure of himself now. He's showing Barry the ropes. And I love them having the almost James Bond type um, dynamic and of course it is inspired this episode is wholly inspired by James Bond which can get a bit cheesy again at times but with these two characters on screen I buy it I like it it just I like the criminal aspect to it of course Ralph is trying to investigate the case of Sue Dearborn of course in the comics becomes his girlfriend or wife actually but of course we have to endure this until we meet the actress I think she's going to appear in the latter half of the season. So we'll finally meet Sue Dearborn in the latter half of the season. So I knew she wasn't going to be appear here. But they were going on a wild goose chase among all these criminals in the same place, which they didn't realise. And Barry just looks out of his depth. Some really good humour when Ralph's introducing himself in a typical Bond fashion, trying to flirt with this woman. And then Barry just starts coughing out of nowhere. And Barry lets out to the criminal, to the criminal they play games with, that they're not really on the guest list which was a stupid mistake to make and probably something I would have made. And that's why I think I saw my, my clumsiness in Barry Allen. So even if it wasn't exactly proper good drama in the, of a Flash episode, I liked it as humour. I liked it very much as humour and liked their dynamic as well. So we find out that this new criminal who's heavily inspired by James Bond, of course, even Ralph points it out. Points it out. But just because a show points out humour and parody doesn't make the parody crap. You know what I mean? So the parody wasn't there really i think the villain wasn't as good in terms of the villain it wasn't good in terms of everything else in terms of the flirting in terms of the action set pieces in terms of the end of the world circumstances 
which doesn't just just doesn't make any sense but you could just go with it because it's a funny thing it's a funny cheesy thing you know it's a, it's a monster of the week type thing like the flash usually did back in the day but it's of course a giant james bond james bond <laughs> james bond yeah they had the gold finger reference and stuff like that and the villain wasn't just was just there as part of the scenery almost of the james bond type thing they were going for so yeah that couldn't be a bit better what was good in terms of villainy was the return of silk not not silk not silk spider-man um she looks like her but she also looks like mortal kombat i forgot her name to be honest uh, but she looks cool so hopefully she in the back half of the season we see more of her yeah, so she's connected to this whole enterprise and she's helping the criminal, I forgot his name already, uh, <laughs> capture Barry and Ralph. And Ralph is telling Barry, okay, fine, you made a mistake, guest list, okay, that's fine, but don't suit up. There's no need to suit up. Barry Allen is important for this situation, not the Flash. There's a time and a place. Of course, Barry is a bit hasty and he uses his suit and they get caught inevitably. What a shock, what a surprise. Um, but yeah, I do like how Barry can still make mistakes. He's not allowed to make mistakes. He has grown as a character. But there is still mistakes in him. And I like how Ralph is almost teaching Barry the ropes. A subversion of season 4. When it was Barry teaching... Oh, high pitch. Barry teaching Ralph the ropes, if you know what I mean. Of, of his how to be a hero. But now Ralph's teaching Barry to be a private detective. Detective. So yeah, that was a cool little parallel or sort of thing. I don't know if they meant it, but... It's just cool to see how the characters have grown a bit. And I like how Barry admitted to himself he made a mistake and he should have just listened to Ralph. And and the and at the very end of the episode it comes around. Um but before that they have a lot uh, have to have the set piece to end the villain. And I like how Barry himself recognizes that the Silk character I'm gonna just call it Silk from now on, because I forgot her name. <laughs> that she looks like a Mortal Kombat character, that was a funny joke. Uh, even though it's probably cringe acting, but I like when just cringe acting is just done well because I think Grant Gustin who plays Barry is having a whale of time and he really just acting drunk and just maybe well he's acting acting drunk because that's the whole point to to delay time for the criminal to enact the super weapon that will show off how good it is so they can sell it to the highest bidder and kill Central City in the process which didn't happen because Barry had a shield he had a sword and he wiped out I like them to be fair Ralph was getting good fighting with the main criminal but Barry was using the henchman the typical Bond henchman of course who was who was Silk in this case and of course I like the way he just he became James Bond almost he learnt he didn't really learn to well yeah he learned to be Barry Allen he learned to deceive the opposition not with the suit not with the flash suit but with Classic spy skills on the cover, acting the doofus, then getting the sword and shield. Maybe not knowing what you're doing half the time, but you're James Bond. You're going to get the sword, you're going to hit the wire, you're going to take out the henchman, and you're going to take out the criminal. That's exactly what I did. That was a cool little satisfying moment. And for someone who appreciates the James Bond franchise, there's no reason to have a bit of fun with it. You know what I mean? In this show. And as I said, it all goes back around when Barry Allen invites Ralph to the GCPD. Uh, was it I think Barry of course said it was an excuse that he was lying about why Ralph should be there of course when they're tied up classic moment to reflect upon their actions just as Barry says he met he says he made a mistake in suiting up and getting captured which allowed Ralph to get captured as well which was a cool touch Barry also revealed when tied up what he he was gonna make Ralph he's gonna make Ralph the new protector a new protector for Central City officially through a press conference I think and of course, Ralph was Ralph takes it on the chin and he gets the little new logo. And I like it. I like it a lot. And it makes sense that he's going to be a new protector, but not like replacing the Flash. But obviously, Barry Allen's not going to come out and be like, "Yeah, I'm going to die. The Flash is dead." So elongated man, he's going to take over. Obviously, just in case anything could happen, elongated man will become a new protector. So when the Flash, if he dies, elongated man can step in and do the job. It's one of those things that you don't really need it to be there. You don't need this little character moments. These cool little appreciation of how these characters are reacting to crisis. But they include it in. And they find a way to make... And then it elevates the rest of the storylines up. Because even though it is a cheesy parody of James Bond, it all made sense in the end. And it makes the filler type episode less of a filler. And so, 
after Ralph gets his new logo and officially announces the new protector, Barry Allen gets uh, his own award. I like how... It, well, what's weird is that the Flash is using his normal voice. So he's not protecting his identity. So, so, like, you're not vibrating your voice in front of everyone. Like, can't they just recognize your Barry Allen when you show up? Because Barry Allen doesn't say anything after. Because if, if Barry Allen speaks after Flash has spoken, it's like, we know you're the same person, mate. But it's not about that. It's not about that. You can overlook stuff when there's cool character moments, such as Barry Allen being recognized for his hard work. I think Ralph Digby organized this. He wanted Barry himself to get the Medal of Honor. Not just for his sh sh James Bond antics, but of course his GCPD job. Just making Barry realize more of the self-importance of him being himself, not just the Flash being important, which is which which is what exactly what they said in the episode. Which is of course Barry Barry Allen probably knows this, but you forget that when you're a hero and there's massive stakes on the line. You just think the Flash, the hero, the legend needs to live up to it. But also Barry has to recognize that it's himself that has the power to do that, and. That's something you can forget, even after the years of fighting. And it makes sense that they, had this, that they reminded him of that. They gave Barry Land the recognition in, he deserved in terms of GCPD. But let's be honest, we've seen on screen more stuff of the Flash doing work than GCPD detective work from Barry Land. I wish we saw more of that. But nevertheless, in the show, he gets the medal for it. And it is just representing Ralph's appreciation of Barry Allen and how he stepped up today, but also needs that confidence and needs that encouragement for crisis in a way you know what i mean everything can be rolled back to crisis but elongating man relationship their relationship was really at the center of things and i really like that oh moving on to the last storyline thick and fast um because i need to end this episode really quick i don't want to make this too long but i want to give you guys the best ana analysis and best discussion so you can follow up on it down below in the comments let me know what you think i think that barry allen storyline was the main piece and of the puzzle of this episode and it was really it was the best storyline but the second best followed shortly was the allegra and uh nashwell storyline i completely forgot that allegra was actually the cousin of silk hopefully that comes back around that shows how silk is not good it's just not memorable yet except for the look we need to have more character building with that one um but yeah allegra certainly had some character building and she's now a reporter of course for the iris west central city citizen and he finds, or he finds, she finds, Nash Wells trying to search for the Eternium. Yes, the rock, not the Eternium, the artifact that will enable him to open the door underground to find the monitor, apparently, according to him. And of course, I like how Allegra is like, you'll have some Wells, how's that happening then? And then Nash is like, no, no, that's not the case, I'm a doppelganger. And she's like, what's a doppelganger, sort of, and he's going to make a deal. Nash is that uh, Nash is my favorite kind of Wells in, for the past couple of years. Not he's not the best one so far. He could become one, but he's certainly better than we've had a couple of years. Even though all of them would be decent, to be fair, um, because he's like he's trying to get whatever he wants to get that artifact. Almost, almost like a, almost a bit Indiana Jones, but a bit, a bit off it, if you know what I mean. A bit, a bit weird, which makes sense. He's from another Earth, and he and Allegra's ag agreed to help Nash get to the Eternium through or break through the door using her powers not the artifact I guess I don't think they used the artifact because she was the artifact against I guess <laughs> I forgot about that um yeah so they're gonna allow her to break through the door but only she will do it only if he explains all this multiverse stuff which is really cool to see and it opens up a, ta a can of worms of crisis in terms of should the public know about the multiverse? Should the public know about all these weird events happening? You know what I mean? It makes you question that the audience a bit, which is cool to see. And it'll be interesting to see how they react. The public do react to Crisis when it does happen in a couple of episodes time. So it raises those questions while also allowing Allegra to develop even more than we thought we could, we could have developed. You know what I mean? She, she seems like a really good fit for Team Flash in the future. But right now I like her position as a central citizen supporting character. She's doing really good, man. I think the actress is getting a lot to work with and she's selling it. And I like how they paired up with Nash Wells. And Nash almost sees her as a daughter by the end. I think that's what they were going for. It was confusing at the end. I was like, why is, she look why is he looking upon her at the end? Is he reflecting upon she might die in the crisis? Is he looking at her because it's reminding her of... Reminding him of a daughter he once had, of course, like Jesse Quick. 
Now, that was that's a cool interpretation question that the audience has to answer. And yeah, hopefully we develop more of that almost relationship. I like Nash and Allegra together. I think they made a good team. Good team in the end. Of course, Allegra was a bit hesitant at first opening the door. But and it did seem she did turn around her decision really quickly. I wish we saw Nash try and did we even see Nash try and persuade her to come back? I don't know. Sometimes you don't need to persuade everyone. You don't have to have a speech all the time trying to hype someone up to do something like they always do in the Flash. Even it, it hypes me up, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So yeah, I think they broke through and they saw some symbols. They saw some weird energy. I don't know what was going on there. Hopefully you guys can figure that out for me or other YouTube videos. <laughs> so yeah, we'll see if the monitor is truly in there. What is going on in that one? So yeah, that will end my shorter episode review uh, for an episode that was good for the most part. Some rushed elements, some cringe moments that didn't really land, especially with the Cecile storyline, which was a bit disappointed with. Um, but all in all, the Barry Allen and Ralph Digby is just gold in my opinion. I don't know why, it's something about it that I really like. And the Lag Alleg Allegra, Allegra and uh, Nash Wells storyline was, su was a welcome surprise and a good Again, another pushing towards prices without going too overboard. But I think the next two episodes are going to do that. Just, they're going to do that more. They're going to push prices even more as we head to the mid-season finale. Which is going to be split into two episodes, of course. One next week and the one the week after. The last temptation of Barry Allen. And it looks really exciting. Blood work, of course, by the end. Basically takes down the elongated man. Always trying to anyway. He looks hideous. And it's going to be really interesting to see how that follows up with him. As well as was him against Elongated Man, seeing if Elongated Man has what it takes to inherit inherit what Barry Allen has, or is Barry, bah, Barry Allen, Barry Allen, is he going to, is he going, what's his last fight going to entail, is he going to, how is Bloodwork going to try and make Barry Allen into his, get to his side, join him in the dark side almost, and being like, you don't have to die in crisis, you can live on, you know what I mean, it's going to be, see, I want to see that relationship unfold, and I like how they've split into two episodes, so we, it enables the most impact to be made there. But yeah, we had this episode in the meantime. But it still had some good character moments and good character progression. Even if it was a bit. And I, w I would have liked to see Killer Frost a bit more in this episode. And hopefully we see her more in the next two episodes. Because of course she is connected to blood work. And also Cisco wasn't in. I don't think the actor was available. So maybe that's one of the reasons they were like, Oh, Chester could be a, a good replacement. Well, but Allegra seems a more better character so far in terms of development. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Leave your thoughts down below. My hand is going off camera a lot. Hopefully that doesn't happen. <laughs> don't know. Uh, <laughs> need to make the camera a bit more steady, I think. Yeah, don't be afraid to comment like what you liked about my review, what you liked about the episode, but also what you didn't like about the episode. And also if you want me to make any more improvements. As I said in the first half of this review, I'm going to make an announcement of my coming videos and not really an announcement, more of a tease. Uh, going to gonna do some more video game streaming and I think you can guess what game is going to be. And trust me, there's going to be way more of that where it came from. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you reached the end of this video, I hugely appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.